how are y'all doing? It's the Brandon Cruz Daily Fantasy Podcast, where I go and look at loan plays and strategies specifically designed for GPPs, specifically, not specifically. This is a show for people who are already informed on daily fantasy sports and how these contests operate. If you have any questions related to NASCAR that isn't a stupid question, feel free to send it my way at Brandon Cruz DFS on Twitter. Most importantly, take everything here with a grain of salt and use your best judgment when you make it entries. Additionally, if you have a gambling addiction, that is not my problem. Check your sense of feelings at the door. We're talking about the Xfinity Series at the Brickyard, the road course race, the road course rally, the Grand Prix, whatever you want to call it. Um... It's there. We're we're running the Indy GP road course layout for the Xfinity Series. Um, what a shame! I got to miss Pocono. I got to miss the Pocono weekend. I got I got to miss them. I got to miss talking about the Xfinity Series at freaking Onacop. Uh, that is the worst track on the circuit, and it's a shame too, man. The idea behind that track is um interesting man i mean it's a hard track it, it tests the drivers and setups but it's boring it's boring indycar made a mistake by not going there because that's one of the only tracks that actually requires skill um who cares if if we've only had like four fatalities there in the past few years like uh Pocono was one of the races I actually watched for the IndyCar series. So now that they've, now that they became babies and left, they got a freaking windshield. They got a, they got, they basically have a full blown stock car now in the IndyCar series, and they're still not running Pocono. And Pocono, that's not the track's fault. It's not the track's fault if people try and throw it into the corners. Throw it in the tunnel turn more specifically and just wreck the field. That's not the track's fault. That's the freaking drivers. Um, but thank God we, we only have to deal with Pocono once this year. Um, anyway, going to Indy. Um, oh, side note, hold on. Let me just... Uh, and I understand that there might be some echoing, as you can see on the video. Hold on. No, that's TV. There you go. Um, as you can see, I record this. And there's my knee. My, my, my shorts. So I only have I just put on a nice shirt. I'm I'm still comfortable. I'm not wearing <clears throat> pants or anything. Anyway, um it, it it's probably echoing because I don't have any of my acoustic foam yet installed here. I didn't need it at the other place. By the way, the building was it didn't echo a whole lot, but in this room it's going to echo, so I gotta I'm waiting for that stuff to come in. I was hoping it'd already be here, but it's not. And um so I'll have that coming. And then I'll have all of my NASCAR sh crap uh, <laughs> lining the background and stuff. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I I I, uh, I do all this after the tavern video and all that. So uh, what else? Um. So yeah, let's dive right into this and be sure to go to racefortheprize.com to get the fancy NASCAR spreadsheet that I use and that you should be using as well. And I'm not just saying that. Let me show you. Let me explain to you why it's a great sheet for me because I've been moving for the past week. I've been moving since Saturday of last week. I got everything moved in and actually moved. I like I had to pack last Friday. I got everything moved in last night because it just my girlfriend and I we're moving everything. We didn't hire movers like first and foremost if you have two if you have three couches basically you know two beds like six computers between us and god knows what else we moved get get movers <laughs> this was ridiculous uh it was like i was working physical labor again anyway uh because of that i couldn't really do research for this race up until today because i had been moving stuff well Lo and behold, this sheets has my back because I have the practice data all right here. I have the projections for how Pierce thinks it's gonna, the track's gonna go, or the races, or the drivers, how they're gonna perform. I don't know why I kept saying that. He has his own projections. Um, he has practice time. The oh, excuse me, almost burp. Sorry. Um, he has the road course data from the past. Wow. Anyway, he has the road course data from the past races I can look at. He has the entry list I can look at. So I can just look at, oh, who has a good guy in their car? Who's a road course ringer? Who isn't? He has data from the Roval, like I said. Everything that I want to find and that I use in my research, I don't have to go anywhere. It's all right here. I don't have to browse the internet. I don't have to wander around different websites like a drunken hobo 
uh, leaving the red light district at 4 a.m. in the morning. Like, I don't have to worry about that. I have it all in one place. So I would advise you, if you do not have the Fantasy NASCAR spreadsheet, get it. it saves so much time and energy. Makes your life so much easier. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's why I love this. Anyway, let's get into it. The practices that they used for this here. Let me see. Um, looking at the practice data. Um, these teams aren't really taking a whole lot of advantage of the time that they have. I'm glad that we have practice back. So I don't have to worry about having. Um, th that's what I don't understand. This proves that NASCAR can, if they wanted, if they if they really wanted to, they can have practice in these races. But they don't. They don't care. They don't want. And they're like, oh, we're trying to save time. We don't need this. Just get everyone in and out. Um. Well, then again, Jimmy has COVID, so we'll see how quickly this just falls apart. But um, I just I just want people to have practice. I just want to shake. I don't even I don't even need an hour practice. Give them, give each guy five laps on the track. And just shake the dang car down. Because I hate, I absolutely hate not having practice. One, because I enjoy seeing how cars run. Two, I hate it from a competitive standpoint because you don't know what your car has exactly. You gotta trust your you gotta trust your crew a lot to arrive. Like you, you they're gonna arrive and uh, this car is not gonna fall apart. And then I don't like how good teams, and it's the good teams too, it's not the bad teams, it's always the good teams that make these mistakes. But like the the weight falling out of um, Briscoe's car at the Homestead race, Tommy Joe Martin's not being able to start the race, Tyler Reddick in the Cup Series having uh, power steering issues before we even go green. These cars are having issues out of the gate, and we have no idea. We cannot predict that. But look, there's a difference between predicting that oh this guy's going to finish fifteenth, than you know. He can't get his car to start. <laughs> like, oh, he can't shift out of third gear uh, because we didn't have practice. So we didn't know that. Like, that makes this not fun, and it makes it frustrating. I ha I've never been so frustrated with DFS uh, before, just because things that are out of my control. I mean, things that I have no, no, um, you know, like when you make a mistake at DFS, you need to look back and see, oh, well, you know, that was a bad mistake or, uh, well, I should have done differently. Like you need to know what you did and what you didn't do wrong. If you got lucky, if you was a good player or whatnot, but with certain, these things here, it's frustrating because I can't, I don't know that I can't do anything because this idiot arrived at the track with a car that wasn't prepared. So at least we got that done. Uh, looking my, <laughs> my main point here with that rant was, uh, looking at the laps that these guys ran on the track. Yes. Everybody went out there to, you know, understand the track. What is this track? Like, what is the breaking zones like? But if you look at the top contenders, of this, I mean, a Elmeninger ran five laps. I'm, I, this is off my head. I assume Almendinger has ran this track before. I don't know. When, I don't know what he has ran it in, but I assume he's ran it before. I'm just gonna say that here. Austin Cindrick did, did ten laps. Briscoe nine. Haley eight. Allgaier thirteen. Clements twelve. Gregson eighteen. Yeah, this is number one. Uh, Blicky five. Chastain seven. P Partis seven. Uh, Brandon Jones ten. Herbers thirteen. Burton seventeen. Alfredo 12th, Burton 12th, LeBay 7th, Before 9, Annette 19, Moffat 9, Sindrick, no, uh, my bad, Gold, Goldvik, Brandon Goldvik 7, uh, Light 7, Tommy Joe Martins 10, Brandon Brown 7, uh, Timmy Hill 4, Matt Snyder 4, Williams 10, Earnhardt 3, Weatherman 1, Wallace 10, Sieg 7, Joe Graff Jr. 13, Bailey Curry 1, Cody Vanderball 2, Render Wall 2, Cody take it behind the wall 2, uh, just a little one. Now, now the reason I'm saying this is because I, I got two things here. One, I got practice to go over for once. Two, I have a lot of new people listening that don't know a damn clue about any of this stuff. So I'm telling you how many laughs these guys ran here. And three, I'm showing it to the people who, you know, maybe something's busy. You don't have time to look at the practice data. You listen to me, maybe to Pierce, maybe to somebody else. You don't have a, you can't, you, you're not able to see how many laps have been ran by these guys. That's why I'm saying this here. So you have an, you have an idea of what people are doing. And practice number two, the guys who stand out to me, Cindric ran 19, AJ Almeninger ran 12. Let me get a drink. Hold on.
Haley ran 15, Briscoe ran 9, Allgaier 20, Chastain 10, Gregson 13, Burton 17, LeBay 9, Clements 8, Herber 17, Michael Annette 17, Partis 8, Jones 13, Jeb Burton 11th, Alfredo 11th, Before 2, uh, Snyder 10, Goldvik, Godvik, Godvik, Brandon Dovik. Is the G silent? How do I pronounce this? I got to figure that out at some point. Um, <laughs> Timmy Hill 1. Uh, Brandon Brown, 5. Tommy Joe Martins, 4. Seek, 12. Curly, thir- uh, Curly 3. Williams, 2. Weatherman, 2. Mike Wallace, 11. Joe Griff Jr., 9. Take it behind the wall, 7. Fitchup, uh, 1. Vinny Miller, 1. BJ McLeod, 1. Matt Mills, 2. Okay, so now that we understand how many people, how many laps everybody ran, and that's including every time they cross the store, the scoring pylon at the store. Another thing on that, because... Why is Indy, like, I uh, I haven't seen the track this week, but, like, you know, Indy's always like, oh, it's the center of racing in the motorsports, and then the Indy cars are like, this is our home track, because Indy cars from Indianapolis, and blah, blah, blah. Why is this the most dangerous track on the professional circuit, okay? I understand you, Daytona's killed a lot of drivers. Indianapolis has killed a lot of drivers, Okay. Uh, I mean, if you want to also, I mean, if you want to chat about this, tweet at me, man. I'll I'll throw sweet savage jokes at you. I'll I'll chit chat about drivers dying left and right because I I will enjoy that conversation. But Indianapolis, why why don't they have safer barriers all over the track? And why like I understand it, it would cut the it would cut the raceable part of the track down to like eight feet, you know, because. I, at least last year, I, I haven't seen the track this year because I've been uh, researching. Uh, but usually, like the 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 walls in between, like one and two and three and four, that's still concrete. There's no safe barrier there. Why are why do you guys say you're the pinnacle of like safety and whatever when you guys don't have safer barriers there? Or if they did, you know, it took them twelve years to to add those stupid safer barriers there. Or the scoring pylon, like. That just baffles my mind. Why is that scoring pylon right there? Like, I'm I'm honestly surprised no one has flown into the into the scoring pylon. You know what's going to happen in, in some sport, sometime in the future, whether it's IndyCar, Cup car, somebody's going to get turned sideways, catch air, and fly into the scoring pylon on the start finish line, knock that down, kill at least fifteen spectators. And it'll be uh, the second biggest story since the 1953 Le Mans. Or was it 53? One of those. Either way, Indianapolis is a joke of a racetrack in terms of safety. So don't... <laughs> like They're going to be like, oh, this is a safe track. No, no. Um, whatever. Sorry. I got to, I got to get my rant. I've been, I've been carrying boxes for a week now. I got to, I got to rant somewhere. Anyway, looking at the practice data here, um, who is showing speed? Who isn't? What's going on here? So uh, let's check it out. The guys who were most consistent in the practices, Austin Sindrick uh, was Austin. Well, I'm, uh, I'll check them all here, actually. You have Austin Sindrick, Justin Haley, Chase Briscoe, uh, Justin Allgaier, Noah Gregson showing consistency, uh, Preston Partis, which uh, side note on Preston Partis, let's, let me look at his history. Right I know he wrecked earlier this year. Where did he do that? Finished 17th at the Roval. Yeah, finished 36th at Road America. So this guy is, uh, he's a road course feller. What the heck? There we go. He's a road course feller um, that I played last year in both races. Which, whoo, boy, what a mistake there. Um, he is in the 36th car this weekend. I might make a bit. He was running. His family ran a car the last races last year. So his dad, he he wanted to try um, running the road course races for the Xfinity series. Like he wanted to try NASCAR racing. So him and his dad bought a, uh, a stock car, an Xfinity car last year and souped it up for the road course races last year, the Roval and wrote America, I believe. 
and uh, they were like, oh, we're going to run well, like, we've saved up money for this, we're going to do this, yada, yada, yada. They had mechanical issues in both races. Road America, he, I think he only did, like, 11 laps, 8 laps before something happened. Like, it's it's it just baffles me that you can arrive that poorly to a track. Like, it, it's just dumb. So... Keep in mind with Preston Partis, last year he was running his own equipment, his own stuff that was prepared by him and his dad and his family and all that type of stuff. And he's a young kid too. Um, now that he is running uh, an actual car, like an actual uh, car that should be prepared, you know, by Mario Goslin and his team, 4,900 is not bad. Anyway, I'm talking about practice right now, but I'm just saying that about Preston. So when you when you see his past races or his track history from last year, that's why it was so bad because he ran uh, just a horribly prepared car. So he's consistent. Uh, Jeremy Clements is showing consistency in both races in both practices. Riley Herbert as well. Uh, who else? AJ Allmendinger is going to show consistency. Uh, let me see what else is here. Looking at the practice data that stands out to me. Let me see. Let me see. I'm trying to think of something that I want to say here. I just went blank at what I was going to say. I have it written down. But I, I lost it. I put my notebook away. I can't say it. Um, whatever. We're going to look at this in a sense of the fantasy perspective, the strategy pers perspective. I think that's why. It's because we have practice, but no qualifying. And so these guys aren't lined up by terms of speed. I think that's what was throwing me off for a second. Um... The best car on the track tomorrow should be AJ Allmendinger. He should win the race. He's not competing for a championship. He's not. He's going to go for this win. Uh, we've already um, been brought aware of it uh, by Pierce because he was the first one who said it, that Austin Sindrick got his win on the, what is it, the Roval? Uh, let me see. Road America, Roval. That's one of those. Right? Yeah, I'm not going crazy, right? Where is it? At? <sighs> whatever. I'm whatever. I'm dumb. I don't know. What? And I just X out of it. Whatever. Um AJ Almendinger should I can't believe I just I just X out of two tabs on accident. Um AJ AJ Almendinger should have the best um car tomorrow. He should win the race. He should play the stage game and use the stages to get up front, stay up front at the end of the race. I have no issue playing AJ Allmendinger eleven thousand five hundred dollars. Um, I just want to say that right now, so I don't have to talk about him later. AJ should be the play of the weekend. Um, going through the starting grid, um, this should just act like a normal road course. Sure, you're gonna have comers and goers, but the top or there's 15 cars that are competent, that are arriving with the ability to finish in the top 15. Those guys should pull away from the mid-tier cars that are about 16 through 25th. Those guys are going to be battling amongst each other and blah, blah, blah. Then 25th on back, it's going to be a mess. Uh, these guys are not going to really put up much of a fight, and their only saving grace is going to be the stage, point, stage points. I don't see a lot of people going laps down. Uh, let me see what else here. Um, the guys that I like starting first through 10th, and I'm not worried about dominator points or whatever. I'm mainly just chasing place differential in, uh, in the race tomorrow. Uh, let me see here. Top 10, the guys that I like from here is obviously Briscoe, Haley, Cindric, Chastain, Gregson, uh, Anthony Alfredo, only because he's $8,000. He's a bit... He's starting a bit too high for me, but eight thousand dollars he should be all right to where he doesn't kill you. Um, Burton, Justin Allgaier, a tad too expensive, and I would much rather go to Gregson or Chastain, only because I'm probably going to be fitting an AJ Allmendinger in most of my lineups. And then I imagine Sieg, Jones, and Ed and Burton will not stay up in the front. They'll be passed at some point. They might lead the first stage, but what's that? Only like seven laps. <laughs> like I don't care about that. At all, I'm place. I'm chasing place differential. Looking at Jesse Little, forty-seven hundred dollars. If he doesn't, let me look right fast. Where do I have this at? Jesse Little is absolutely dirt cheap, and this is a road course. And part of me wants to make the argument to myself that, well, you know, if he just holds on, if he just 
doesn't do anything stupid. He's he's in a Johnny Davis car. You know, he he shouldn't be that horrible. At $4,700, this is an event that I think you can play him starting right there. I don't think he's going to lose a lot of positions. Um, and if you're going to just try and shove in as many people in this race as possible, if he starts, what was it, 13th? Let me see. Yeah, he started 13th at $4,700. Last week, for example, in the Pocono race, he started 14th at at $200 more, finished 10th, finished with 39 points. I see that situation happening again with Jesse Little. He is too cheap, and uh, I think you need, you need one punt this week in, in this race, whether it be Little, Wallace, Pardis, somebody in the $4,000, I think you need to have him in your lineup. Mike Wallace, a guy who I don't even know how he got into this race. Um, I don't. I forgot if it, if he, I don't know, it's ridiculous. He hasn't ran here, um, he hasn't ran a race, and this is off the top of my head, maybe four or five years. The last time I remember him running was in the 01 car in like, yeah, I know he ran that in 2010, 2011. Maybe 2013 was last. I don't even know when his last race was. Um, I do remember him getting beat up in a parking lot. Anybody remember that throwback to Mike Wallace getting the crap kicked out of him? Anybody remember that story? That's probably three years ago by now. Yeah, I think that's how I was dating because how long... I think that's how I was dating how long it had been since he raced because I think he hadn't been in a race car for like two or three years before that. Anyway, he got beat up in a parking lot, messed up his face pretty bad. Uh, whatever. BJ McLeod. Uh, let me go back to just a little Mike Wallace. I think you need to play one of these guys. Mike Wallace uh, carries way more risk. I imagine nobody's going to play him. I probably won't even go that crazy. I'm not going to play that many lineups. Um, also, Lineup construction. We're I'm, we're going to do a lot of discussions here. I, you know, screw it. I'll do this at the end. Um, Mike Wallace, probably a no for me. BJ McLeod, too expensive. I'm going to punt somewhere else. Brett Moffat, who is just staying alive because he's been running pretty well. Fine going there. Jade Beford. Let me see. Where is he at here? Jade Beford. He is in a Bobby Dodder car. Should be in the 07, right? Let me make sure here. Yeah, he is in the 07. Uh, I believe they got a good sponsor for him. Hold on. Let me look. Do, 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 do. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. And yeah so he has a good sponsor not too worried about that apparently he's a road course ringer which at least we have that back now i always enjoyed road course ringers uh but six seven hundred dollars is just too expensive too much don't like it um maybe people get cute and they're not interested earnhardt um not interested preston partis i already told you his his argument there in a better car than he had been last year um, if he can do well, I, I've, I watched him do races last year in preparation for his road course races. And I, I know he's in a Mazda, which is, you know, that, <laughs> that's the best road course car ever made, you know, the Mazda MX or whatever series he runs those Mazdas in. Um, so I know he's a good driver. He just, he needs his stupid equipment not to break. Uh, it lasted a lot longer in these two practice sessions than his races last year did in the actual races. So I have some faith in that. So I would not be surprised if Fardis gets top 15 finish. Uh, Williams, too expensive. Clements, too expensive. LeBay, too expensive. Herburst is just f wildly like what a jump up between last week and this week. I haven't seen the price check. Let me see. I assume Riley Herberst is in the price check. <laughs> like I haven't, I, I assume. Uh, I haven't read that article yet. Uh, also, if you don't do that, that, that's another article, and it's not just because Pierce. One, well, it is because I, I value Pierce a lot uh, in his in what he does in his articles. But if you don't read that article in in uh, just to get Xfinity information, what are you doing? If uh, good lord. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, that, that's too expensive. I can't afford that. I can't go to Riley Herbers for that. Brandon Brown, 24th, fine with that. Tommy Joe Martin, 6,100, fine with that. Matt Snyder, 7,800, I'm fine with that. I'll probably play a lot of Matt Snyder again, just because I've been on him. Uh, Cody, no, uh, Kyle Weatherman. Now, 
this is another thing I haven't looked at because I was busy moving, but Kyle Weatherman and Mike Harmon, they have that, uh, what is it, stand behind the flag, stand, don't kneel, what is this, stand for the flag. So this is, they just have repairables on the car. So I'm trying to think, like that wrap had to be, you know, more expensive than what Mike Harmon wants to afford or wants to pay, because I imagine he, the, the dude doesn't like changing tires, much less putting a wrap on the car, what? So I'm curious if this whole like back the blue argument for their car, and I'm not talking political here at all, I'm not, I'm purely talking about fantasy stuff and how this could affect fantasy crap. Um... Are they? Do you think Mike Harmon is getting more sponsorship money or having the potential to get more money? Because I haven't seen like we obviously it's only been like two weeks or whatever, uh, but we're not seeing any big huge sponsors get on this get on this team. But that forty seven car, like that that wrap. I know it's something small, and everybody can get wraps nowadays. But that tells me, as someone who has been in the garage before, like, if there's a crap dude, like, if there's a dude who runs way off the pace, it's different if he arrives to the track and has a, and spent all the money on the, making the car look nice for the fans and then runs like garbage. But when you're, when you're constantly running poorly, uh, and I'm talking about the previous years, but when you're constantly running poorly, um, and then you get a brand new wrap, and like you've been getting talked about in the media and you're getting more coverage on the track you got to he's got to be they got to be getting more money in there right like weatherman has done well this year and i i say this about every video i make uh let me see where is it where is it where is it where is it i just real what happened to x super 2 interesting uh let me look let me look let me look where is this track history app I've been gone for a week and forgot how to use anything on this. Hold on a minute. Right, let me bring up an older one right fast. Because I don't have anything open here. Okay, let me look at Weatherman, his track history this year. So I'm going on a rant here. Race rating. Okay, look at the race this year. That was last year. What? What am I looking at here? Race rating, race rating. Did he do that bad? 35th at both at both Homestead races? 34th at Fontana? 30th, wait, wait a minute. Kyle Weatherman, let me look. 27th, starting 27th. Yeah, I fit, okay, that's what I was trying to find. Yeah, he, he finished 15th at Pocono. Um... I guess I could just look on DraftKings there. Recent rate. Anyway, so if if you look at how this car was, and I know the Xfinity race was a wreck fest, um, but 30th, 30th, running 30th this year so far, I think he was in the 74 car for these for those races, and he's in the 47 this year. But a 15th finish at Pocono um, makes the argument to me that he, they're getting outside sponsorship or they're getting money from somewhere somehow. I assume it's some organization for veterans or people who or conservatives who are just fed up with NASCAR because NASCAR is gone. I ain't watching no NASCAR no more, even though the ratings have gone up <laughs> during COVID. <laughs> Whatever. Um, watch out for that 47 car. I, I know that was a long rant, but 27 starting 27th. I think he runs the whole race. He's running. He's got a good looking car, quote unquote, with the wrap on there. That that took that took some money out of. The small team's bank account. Uh, I don't think he does pretty bad. He, I think 28 guys technically took time in practice number two. He was 19th. Uh, that was practice one. Wait a minute. Let me look. Practice number two. Where was Kyle at? Kyle was... Weatherman was 26 fastest. He ran two laps in the second practice. Or yeah, in the second practice. Um that's not bad. That that's what I would expect off of Mike Harmon. And then he ran one lap in the first practice, twenty eight fastest. That's not bad at all, man. He's showing speed. It wouldn't shock me if Kyle does well in this race. Uh Stefan Light, let me bring up let me hold on, I gotta look at this very fast. 
uh, is there a team on it? Let me see here. Let's see, Leech. Yeah, Leech is gonna race. Joe Graf Jr. Too cheap. He fi he's finally too cheap. I'm gonna go there. Uh, as as I was saying, Major Almond here. I'm gonna play him. Cody Vandewalt. Not gonna go there. Bailey Curry. Don't feel like I need to go there uh, right now. Although, let me look at his thing right quick. Bailey Curry is the My Carmen car that has been running very well beginning this year. Now with this added sponsorship or whatever, uh, do they have a certain paint scheme on that car this week? Let me look. Yeah, they're both. Both these cars are running this Stand for the Flag paint scheme. That that's a lot of money to paint two cars, Mike. I mean, he had the black car for years. They got. I imagine they're going to run the whole race. I imagine they're going to try and finish well for this paint scheme. Um, Bailey Curry is in play for me. Matt Mills, yes. Timmy Hill, yes. Uh, Vinnie Miller, <clears throat> probably no. Stefan Parsons, I'll play him. Chad Fitchup, that's a no. He's going to start in park. And then Brandon Goldvik, Godovic for um, Sam Hunt Racing. $8,400. I'm perfectly fine with him starting dead last. That's a fast-looking ride. Uh, looking at his practice time. Let me see here. And, and Chad's starting because he's uh, injured. He got injured from my on a cop crash. If I could, you know, gosh, I'm trying to find Brandon's. Um, Brandon Jones, Brandon Brown, Brandon Jones, Brandon Jones. Are there only two? Brandon, what the? F Wait a minute. Gosh, dude, why, why am I having such a? I I forgot how to use a freaking computer. I'm just I'm hit I'm hitting Control C, trying to find a dude's name, and it'd just be easier if I would just. Oh my gosh, if I would just look, Goldvik, Godvik, Dovik, whatever you want to call him. Brandon in the in the twenty six car, in practice number two, he was nineteenth fastest. In practice number one. This guy was 20th fastest, ran seven laps in the first practice, and then ran five laps in the second practice. My whole point was I'm going to play him. I don't mind it. He should run well. That took far too long to find his stupid name <clears throat> on the uh, on the practice uh, folder there, on the practice data there. I forgot how many laps he led. I'm so dumb. And it even says it on the sheet. It even says it on the sheet how many laps they ran, and I just realized that now. Oh, man. Good Lord. Anyway, let me go through it again. Who do I like here? Uh, top five, not really going to use a whole lot. I'm going to start with Alfredo. I like Alfredo. I like Gregson. I like Chastain. I like Austin Sendrick, Haley, Briscoe, Little, Mike Wallace. I like Little more than him. Uh, Brett Moffitt. Let me see. Preston Partis. Riley Herberst. Uh, Brandon Brown. Riley's a bit too expensive. I didn't mean to say it. I just said his name. Um, don't use... Uh, you can use Riley. I don't know. I'm, I'm Riley's a maybe for me. I don't know. It depends on what my lineup's looking like. Uh, Brandon Brown, Tommy Joe Martin, Matt Snyder, uh, Joe Graff Jr., AJ Allmanager, Matt Mills, Tyler Hill, or Timmy Hill, uh, and Stefan Parsons, and Brandon Dovic. Those would be the guys I would look at. Uh, same plan for the Xfinity Series race as the Cup Series race with terms of Lineup construction. I'm just trying to get as many people as I can into the lineup that I think is going to finish up in the front. I'm going to chase place differential uh, and try and get the winner in the in the lineup, which will be AJ Allmendinger most likely. So I'll just hit two birds with one stone. Then I can just focus on getting guys who are going to get place differential and then finish up front. Let's see. That's going to happen there. What was I talking about before? What was I going to talk about? Um, I don't remember. I don't remember what I was going to say. Oh, lineup. Yes. Uh, I think you, you're going to need one punt uh, to, in the race tomorrow. Why do I say that? What do I mean by that? So let's say, for example, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say the entire lineup that I'm going to make. I'm going to make it for an. Uh, example here. So I'm gonna put uh, Jesse Little in my lineup. So that gives me fifty. That gives me forty five thousand three hundred dollars left. Average player nine thousand sixty. Then you go to AJ Allmendinger. Average player remaining eighty four hundred. Remaining salary thirty three eight. Uh, and then you're like, oh, you know, I like 
You know, I like Riley for actually I'm gonna go a bit cheaper. I like Brandon Goldvik, Dodvik, whatever. That's eighty four hundred dollars on average. And then let's say you go down for another punt or at least a guy who is around let's say six thousand dollars. Let's say Tommy Joe Martins. Uh, you got ninety six hundred dollars left uh, after those four guys, and that's not my core. That's not lineup I'm running. I'm just giving it as an example. Um, so I think you need at least one guy, and I, I think you need a punt this week. One guy, whether you think it's Joe Graff Jr., whether you think it's Preston Partis, Jesse Little, Mike Wallace. I think you need one punt, and then just stack the rest of your lineup with place differential, fast cars. I think that's how you got to do it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to send them my way at Brandon Cruz DFS on Twitter. Check me out on my Patreon page for me. If you feel like you want to donate to me, if you want to support me, you can do that. If you want my heat map for the Cup Series, which is basically my player pool, which is basically me telling you how I'm playing each guy with my projections, with my um, color coordinations of, you know, this guy's a dominator, this guy's a cash play, this guy's blah, 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 whatever. If you want that, you got to go to the DFS Tavern Patreon because um, my Patreon is just for donations and stuff. Um, so, guys, thank you for watching, and uh, we will get um, – we'll talk more stuff later. I don't know. I just want to talk. <laughs> I've been lifting stuff all week. And, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Best of luck in the Xfinity Series race, guys, and we will chit-chat later. Peace out. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. One more. Okay, two more things, actually. That's, what I was, that's also what I was going to say. Um, the DFS Tavern, we're going to – and this isn't really giving anything away. We haven't really formally announced it, but we're not giving anything away, really. Um, but we're not going to rebrand, but we're going to be doing a lot of stuff – that will improve our product that will improve you know our our website what we offer our videos it'll help us in the amount of money we make and all that type of stuff so you'll see some changes in the future don't worry i'm not going anywhere i'm going to stay on board there um but if you see me on my own personal twitter tweeting more talking about watch the video talking about my heat map i'm going to be pushing that a bit more on my twitter so just be aware of that i'm not going to i'm not going to keep spamming or anything like that but i am going to talk more about that type of stuff so just give me a heads up there um that'll be starting this week since i got everything finally in this room and i don't have to keep moving anything so if you see me you know tweeting more that's why don't worry nothing nothing happened outside of that i'm just going to we're 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 going to try some things in the future and that'll be a part of it so uh, just letting you know there and uh, thank you guys for listening, and I'll catch you next time.